This video is going to discuss using the slip roller in the Tyler Metal Shop. It's used for rolling gentle curves in sheet metal. You can also roll um, and curve material like thin eighth inch flat bar and you can also use it to um, roll and do gentle curves in say thin round bar stock uh, up to five sixteenths. Um, before you go using any of your material, you're going to want to ask yourself what your operation is going to be. So if you're going to be using sheet metal, and let's say you want to roll a really wide sheet, as wide as the roller would allow, then you're going to be restricted to 20 gauge. If it's um, thinner, narrower, like this piece, uh, you could potentially go a little thicker. But for large operations, we just don't want to overtax the machine. So we have this 20 gauge um, gauge block here attached to the machine so you can test your sheet metal if you're rolling a really large flat piece. So this is 20 gauge so we're in good shape for doing a large rolling application like that. Uh, if you were going to do say uh, a ring out of some narrower material like say eighth inch by one inch bar stock you'd probably be fine. So this you can roll thicker but notice how it's very narrow so we're not going to overtax the machine so it's okay if it's a little thicker uh, as long as it's really narrow. Uh, the other restriction that you have on here is the um, bar stock. So you can roll light bar stock in these uh, grooves here. Um, you just don't want to use material that is too thick for the machine. So for example, we've got um, a piece of two pieces here and if we take a look at one of them it is um, clearly thicker than, if I use a drill gauge here, it is clearly thicker than uh, 3 eighths. It's going upwards, uh, you know, uh, around 13, 30 seconds. It's pretty, pretty beefy stuff. So that is bigger than the 5 sixteenths uh, that this machine is rated at. So if you look down here, it says nothing larger than 5 sixteenths. So you've got a groove for 3 sixteenths, quarter inch, and 5 sixteenths. And so up here, these are those grooves. So you've got your quarter inch groove, your 3 16th groove, and here's your maximum which is your 5 16th. This guy happens to be a uh, quarter inch and so you can test that on a drill gauge and um, sure enough quarter inch material so we're okay uh, to do in that middle groove there. So that's um, the basic uh, tenets on how not to overtax the machine and not bend anything that's too thick. Now let's take a look at a basic rolling operation. So let's say you are going to use um, maybe a thin piece of sheet metal or something and you want to do a basic rolling operation. Um, you're going to want to take a look at, and this is all spelled out in these instructions over here again, but you don't want to break this machine. Make sure that you're operating it properly. There's a way to open and close this thing properly. So the first thing you're going to want to do is pull out this pin and lift this up. If you come and see this machine in this fashion, you never want to try and force that thing down or bring this thing down. It's this handle that raises and lowers that. That is only if you've rolled a complete ring and you need to remove it from the bender. Sometimes people leave the machine like this and others get confused. So when it's in this state, you want to make sure that you lower it with that handle, then lower this little latch, make sure it seats, and then put that pin back in uh, like so and then everything's fine. So you don't want to ruin anything there. So some other operations here, let's see if I can get a wide enough shot, is if we are going to um, set up uh, the gauge here to actually roll a piece of material. It uses three rollers and it will basically, the first two will pinch onto your material and drive it through. The driving action happens with this handle and then the back roller here is what curves it. So what we want to do is basically pinch our material in the first two. And as, if you want a, an even cylinder, not a cone of some sort or a slight cone, you want to adjust these um, evenly. So what I like to do is come to one side, r tighten this nut here until it grabs and then back off, say, a quarter turn or an eighth of a turn. And then I do the same thing on this side. And then I know that it's parallel. Now I can go somewhere out into the field of the machine and do that same quarter turn, quarter turn until it pinches, and now I'm in a, a good spot. There's two identical little adjusters on the back side here for that back roller to determine how much you're going to roll um, 
along the back side. So maybe we'll bring our shot around the back here and see if we can adjust those. So here you can see um, if our shot is wide enough, you can see the two other knobs here allow you to basically uh, adjust this. So you want to adjust these parallel um, if you want to get a, an even circle. If you adjust one higher and the other lower, you'll get some sort of a slight cone. So if we want them parallel, we'll adjust them parallel. So here I've got those set relatively parallel. And now I'll um, come around to the front and crank my handle along. So with my material um, in place there, we'll grab the old crank handle and hopefully um, send this through with a little curve on it. So there's our, our initial curve. Uh, if you want to give it a little bit more curve, you can adjust this back angle and then feed it through again. And then here we see that we're starting to get a little bit more curve and let's adjust again. And if, again, if you want it regular, I'm basically just keeping track of how many turns I'm going in each um, direction. So I'm doing like three turns, three turns, just match it. And eventually we'll close up our little uh, ring here. And there you go. You can see that we've got more or less a, a complete ring. You might do a little trimming to clean this guy up, um, but once you get the you know the basic gist of it, it's uh, it's not too not too hard. So when we want to remove our material there, first thing we're going to do is pull that pin. You might have to loosen up some of your adjusters, flip that guy back, and then move this handle over, and that frees up your part. And so there is the uh, basic sheet metal. Uh, slip roll is what it's called. So you can, it describes a little bit of geometry down here if you ever wanted to make something conical in terms of how you would lay it out. Uh, it's basically a section of a cone with uh, an arc drawn in such a you know particular fashion there. So there's a little bit of geometry for those of you who wanted, want to make certain uh, conical shapes. It's going to be somewhat limited to uh, its abilities there. I might try and show you a little bit of rolling on some of this bar stock, but I don't have anything um, too long to play with. So we'll just reset this, and maybe I'll see if I've got that little bit of quarter inch material here. We'll open that one until it pinches, and then we would most likely need to crank that guy back a bit, and then we would basically gently uh, adjust this guy so that he grabs, but not too severely, and then adjust the back roller there until we can just start to get a curve in. Uh, and then you'll have to do this in a few passes if you're trying to actually make any kind of meaningful curve in this bar stock. But um, So this was one little turn there. We'll give it a little bit more. And you could feed it all the way out need be. And then bit by bit you'll start to get uh, a ring. It's not the most ideal machine for uh, curving light bar stock, but you could keep going and get a tighter ring. Just take you a few more tries and a few more passes. Just make sure you don't overtax the machine with by forcing it. If you can't do it by hand, if you're really struggling with it, then you're probably trying to bend something a little too sharp, a little too thick. Uh, always ask questions uh, from your instructor or the shop technician and um, just make sure you read that literature on the front of the machine so you don't break anything. Okay, stay safe.